I was jealous of my neighbour, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> Hi everybody, Micheline from Michu Makes. There's my name, Michu, and I'm Micheline from Michu Makes. Um, what I'm going to tell you about today is how I adapted a pattern that I, uh, that I of a dress that I'd already made. I've told you about this dress and I'll tell you in the actual vlog all about it. And uh, basically I'm talking you through how I adapted to the collar for it. And um, well, I shouldn't tell you too much because it's going to tell you, I'm, I'm going to tell you later on about it. But um, suffice to say, I was jealous of my neighbour and I'll tell you why. So basically to start with, I'm going to tell you how I ended up making the dress in the first place. I went to Lacala Patterns. They have a section called sewist.com and in that section you can design your own you can, your own pattern. You can put it, input your own measurements, your bust measurements, your waist measurements, your hip measurements, your height. Um, I can't remember what else, but you can input your measurements. Then you can choose a design that you want to make. And so I thought what I'll do, what I, I'll talk you through or I'll, I'll show you how, how I got the pattern for the dress that I made and how I adapted it. Now it's a very a very very it's a pattern I love I really like it and there are patterns out there that are the big Ford make them and uh, some of the in Indies make them so if you're not into a Lakala or Sewist because they do give you minimal instructions and for you beginners you may not like that but what I can do is I'll also link some uh, some information of patterns that make a very similar dress and for those of you who prefer to go it that way, then then fair enough, you can go that way. But this is basically showing you how I created this dress. And I have made several patterns with it. I've made several dresses with it. I think uh, I must have made about one, two, three, about five or six of them. I've uh, changed the skirt a couple of times. Um, I've adapted them as well. Want the top um, I've used, I've integrated with other companies' patterns. So, for example, uh, when I first made it, I used so over its so over its Mandy dress, I think it was, and uh, used their half their full circular skirt and added it to the bodice. So, this is just going to explain to you how I got the Lacala pattern. So the first thing I did was I went to www.sewist.com and you can see from there what happens.
I'm gonna have to stand back move myself around there now then I made these two dresses and uh, when I bought the fabric they didn't have enough of this and I've actually had to add a little patch a little cuff to that one and another cuff to that side from little pieces that I had left but this was a lacala pattern that I made to my own measurements they had more of this fabric so I actually have a little bit of this left I've got a little pin in here because I want to close that a bit uh, here I don't like gapey bits anyway what I want to tell you is let me hang that up there I like this dress I think it's lovely but the other day my neighbour came to tell me something she came to tell me about the the lady around the corner who's 92 who's gone into hospital she's not been well she's apparently she lives on her own and they found her on the floor she'd been there overnight she was bright yellow obviously a liver and i think she had gallstones so she's in hospital but when they when my neighbor turned up she had this dress on and i kept saying that is a lovely dress it's really nice and she said she got it from sainsbury shop too to you and i liked it because it was very similar to this with the buttons that went down there with a skirt that flared out and I think she had a frill on the bottom, which I'm not not to bother about. What I liked was the bit she had here. She had a frill that went round here, very like the two blouses that I got from Marks and Spencers. And this frill went down. It was a wide frill. It wasn't a narrow one. It was quite wide, like that, and it went right the way down. Now, the reason why I'm telling you this is I think I might have enough fabric to make a frill to go on here, but I have to look for my fabric. If I do, I will make a frill to show you what it looks like. If I don't, then this is as much as you'll see of this skirt, <laughs> of this dress. This is as much as you'll see of this dress. I'm wearing my niche trousers underneath. I don't know if you can see. Let's see how good I am at kicking my leg up. There, can you see? My niche trousers, these ones. I love these and every time I've worn these I've had compliments for from everybody I just wish that we, that we that we could get that fabric and make it our ourselves it's like um what do you call it it's a oh a, a loop backed fabric what's that called Ta terry town terry oh do you know I can't remember what, what they call the fabric now it's it's like a it's a jersey it's a cotton jersey anyway and it it's lovely i love the roses and the patterns on it i'll, I'll cut, bring my leg back up to show you i'm quite capable this is my bad leg uh, but yes it's got um it's got roses on this one i do like that i like that i like the blue denim denim effect on them so if you know anybody who does that fabric please tell me because i would make my own but i do like uh, i do like this these trousers anyway back to the dress I'm going to look for this fabric see if I've got enough to make a frill and if I have then I'm going to make it I'll show you how I do it and uh, we'll see how we uh, if, if it's possible I'll show you how I've changed from this into so this is the metric pattern cutting book and the one I want to make a frill and the frill I want to make is that one there so um it's got a lot of frills, a lot of uh, waves there, and I want it fairly wide. So basically, I have to take my front bodice pattern and my back bodice, overlap them at the shoulder seam, and then draw out, tra trace and draw out the collar that I want it to be. Once I've got the drawing traced out, I then cut it out like that, and I make little notches in it to open it up. And then I cut the fabric out, and I end up with a long collar like this, which will form the folds on there. So this is the um, pattern that I was using. It's a Lacala pattern. I've just joined it together at that seam there. And I want my collar to be quite long there. And I want it to go quite wide over there and then down and round to about there, which is where the button starts. So I've got my tracing paper. And this is Birda tracing paper. And we'll do it to there so I'm going to basically that's going to be where it's going to that's the seam line but we'll take it right up the top 
and I want it to be quite a long back frill. So I want it to be approximately, well let's draw this bit first, follow the seam line like that to there, oops, to there. So that's what the seam line is going to be like. And then here I'm going to make it go round there. I want quite a wide collar over there. I want it, I don't want a narrow thing. So I want it quite wide. I'm just doing this freehand. And then we'll bring it in, still being quite wide, and then bring it round to about there. Okay, so that's my collar. I can take this away now and you can see that that's my collar. So I'm now going to cut that out and then I'm going to um, open it out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make snips down here and I'm going to make them quite uh, regular. If you look at the, the drawing, they basically snip one, two, three, four, five, six lines. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I need to make about six snips. The further I make those splits apart, then the wider and the bigger the frill is going to be. So what I'm going to do is just basically draw six slits. One, two, just anywhere, randomly three, four, five, six. Now I've done them like that, and now I'm going to cut them, but I'm going to stop just. I'm not going to cut right through, I'm going to stop just white, just before the end. So I'm going to cut there, to there, and that one to there, and that one to there, and bear in mind, I'll just put that on, that is going to be my centre back. So this here will be on a fold when I come to fold. Oops, I can't. I've cut this on the, on the, not the shiny side, the rough side, so it's kind of having a reaction to my cut, my marking it. So there, there, and there. Oops. So then I get another piece of paper. Now I don't think this will be big enough because I wanted to cut, no, I, I need to get another piece of paper. So just let me bear with me a second rough side upwards because that's where the way I did it and basically oops that's the way it was and what we're going to do is we're going to open them all out so they end up being almost in a little spiral like a snail like a snail I'm going to wet my finger to make it lie a bit better there 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 so what we now have is I now have to draw around that like that and bring that up here and then draw around here right the way around here like this and bring up bring that round like that going to there and then round there and you can get a rough idea of what's going to be like I'm going to darken those lines so you can see where it's going to. That there. Oops. Draw my line up there, a bit more of a straighter line. That is my centre back. So that should be on the fold. I'm like a kid writing that upside down there. And then round there, and again just darkening it up so you can see it better, like that. And here, darkening that round. 
uh, go around a bit more there you could use your um i have got a circuit i think what do you call it one of those uh, rulers that does curves which i could have used but i can't remember where i put it so we'll just do a touch of the freehand and like that you get a rough idea of what it's going to look like. That doesn't look square. It's not there. Right, and then I will cut that out. And I'll cut, I'm going to cut a piece of fabric. Um, I may not be able to put that on the fold because obviously the way that the fabric will lie, it won't go on the fold there. So what I'm going to have to do is try and give myself a, a little bit extra there. Like that. And I'm going to have to make it two pieces and I'm going to have to sew down that back bit. So let's cut that out next. I have this as my frill. Now let's get the fabric. So this is the fabric that I have and I'm going to put this on, fit this on and then cut it out. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'll take these pins off just throw them at my magnet take these pins off and I'm going to put them right sides together this is the seam that I'm going to go down first so I'm going to sew that seam put them right sides together like that and um, like so and I'm going to sew down this one a five mil hem and then once I've done that I'm going to I'm going to um, search search or zigzag all the way around if you haven't got a search you just zigzag all the way around there and then once you've done that you can turn it under and then sew it and um, what you could do if you wanted to, if you didn't want it just single thickness, you could do the same again, same amount of fabric, a second lot, and then do them right sides together and you'd end up with, end up with a, um, a double-faced um, collar, a double-faced collar. So basically you would cut the same amount again and then you would, um, what you would do is you'd sew the two right sides together right the way around the edge. You'd sew down there first sew the two right sides together right the way around the edge turn them the right way out and then uh, you would use this to sew around the neck of the of the top but i'm just going to do a single one because i don't know what it's going to turn out like i'm just going to do it like this and if it turns out well i wish i had cut two out if it doesn't turn out well then i'm nothing gained, no, nothing lost but as you can see if I hold it up, you get this drapey, this drapey neck there like that. It'll look even better when it's on the garment. So first of all, I'm going to sew up this back seam, sew this back seam, and then I'm going to serge or zigzag along this bottom edge, and then I'll turn it in like that. So I've got a little hem all the way around. I've uh, sewn the seam down the, down the uh, centre back. I've gone over the edges and I've sewn down the edge and now it's a case of fitting it to the neck of the dress and this is the dress. I've already made this up, um, I've already put a facing on and the best way really is to take the facing off and then sew this in between the facing and the fabric. So I think I probably will do that, that's probably what I'm going to do and it will finish down here so I'll have the frill going right the way around and coming back here I could do it on top of here if I wanted to uh, basically I would finish off this seat this raw edge and then sew it from the back perhaps that way so it so that that was onto the onto there and it would hang over the top but I think I'm going to take the facing off and do it that way <laughs>